Let us now turn our attention to peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease involves the erosion of the mucous membrane of the gastrointestinal tract due to contact with hydrochloric acid and pepsin. There are three types of peptic ulcers. Gastric ulcers, which usually develop on the lesser curvature of the stomach, duodenal ulcers, which develop in the duodenal mucosa, and stress ulcers, which develop following a major acute medical crisis or trauma. Peptic ulcers can develop at any age, but duodenal ulcers first develop between the ages of 30 and 50, while gastric ulcers are more common in people over age 60. Duodenal ulcers are found more often in men than in women, whereas gastric ulcers are more common in women than in men. The major risk factors for peptic ulcer disease are a helicobacter pylori infection. This gram-negative bacterium is present in the gastric or duodenal mucosa of 80 to 90 percent of clients who have peptic ulcers. Cigarette smoking, excessive alcohol ingestion, high levels of stress, chronic use of aspirin, chronic use of NSAIDs, a family history of ulcer disease, aging, high serum gastrin levels, rapid gastric emptying, gastric hyperacidity, and chronic gastritis. What kind of symptoms would we see in clients who have peptic ulcer disease? The key symptom is a dull, gnawing pain or burning felt in or to the left of the epigastric region. The pain develops one to two hours after eating and is relieved by eating or taking alkali products. Other symptoms of peptic ulcer disease are nausea and vomiting heartburn, and black tarry stools, which indicate internal bleeding. To assess the client who has symptoms of peptic ulcer disease, you'll first ask about the location, timing, and severity of the pain, and when the pain first started. Next, you'll palpate the client's abdomen for pain, usually located in the upper epigastrium left of midline. If perforation has occurred, the client's abdomen may be rigid and board-like. Esophageal gastroduodenoscopy or gastroscopy alone is a key diagnostic procedure for peptic ulcer disease. Esophageal gastroduodenoscopy is a technique that allows the examiner to visualize the mucosa of the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum directly with a flexible fiber optic endoscope. This procedure is done to assess gastrointestinal motility and to visualize tumors, ulcers, inflammatory conditions, and varices. Instruct the client to take nothing by mouth for eight hours prior to the procedure. Also, be sure the client signs a consent form. If the client has dentures, remove them before the procedure. The client will be given a sedative and a local anesthetic will be sprayed on the throat before the examiner inserts the endoscope. Explain to the client that the anesthetic will calm the gag reflex. Following the procedure, keep the side rails up until the client regains full consciousness. Give the client nothing by mouth until the gag reflex returns. To test for the gag reflex, tickle the back of the client's throat with a cotton swab. The gag reflex usually returns within two to four hours. It is important to check the client's temperature every 15 to 30 minutes for one to two hours following the procedure. Notify the primary care provider immediately if the client's temperature suddenly spikes. A sudden elevation of body temperature might indicate perforation. Other signs of perforation include pain and bleeding. Caution the client to avoid driving for 12 hours following the test. Advise the client to gargle with a warm saline solution or to use throat lozenges to relieve the sore throat likely to result from this procedure. Other diagnostic procedures include upper gastrointestinal x-rays, gastric analysis, and examination of the stool for occult blood. A biopsy may be necessary to determine whether a ulcer is benign or malignant. Management of peptic ulcer disease focuses on pharmacologic therapy, non-surgical management that includes diet therapy and lifestyle changes, and, in some cases, surgery. Medications used to treat peptic ulcer disease include antacids, given one hour after meals to neutralize gastric secretions, help relieve pain, and prevent bleeding. Other medications are antibiotics to treat the H. pylori infection, anticholinergic drugs like propanthaline, that's probanthine, or dicyclamine, that's bental, given before meals to reduce gastric motility. They also include the H2 receptor blockers or antagonists, cimetidine, that's tagamet, or ranitidine, that's Zantac, given before or with meals to decrease secretion of gastric acids, and mucosal barrier protectants, like sucralfate, that's caraphate, to help form a protective coat at the ulcer site.
The client who is hemorrhaging might also need a blood transfusion. Non-surgical management of peptic ulcer disease involves teaching the client about major lifestyle changes. Instruct your client to stop smoking and avoid drinking alcohol and beverages containing caffeine. Also teach the client to avoid spicy foods and meals that are high in fat. It is also important for the client to reduce stress and learn relaxation techniques. Some clients who have peptic ulcer disease require surgery.